I actually do think the dividers has a very decent chance to actually bring this up. Or, sorry, uh, to uh, win this. Although, of course, that remains to be seen. However, I do place faith in Katsil, uh, Katsil's ability to sort of lead a team and try to see if they can actually secure a victory. Here we go. Getting into it right now, and already you see the Tensabrella, the current flavor of the month. You also see an E-Leader and an Explosher. What an interesting composition. Rose, do you have any take on that composition on this map? Uh, well, like we were saying uh, in Clan Blades, stuff like the Ballers is absolutely fantastic. So, so we see the Kenza Duelies coming out. The TGS here, just standing around a little bit, getting a really nice shot with the E-Leader. But overall, what I like seeing about the other team as well, we see the Stingray, but also the Dapple Duelies, uh, which can work so great with uh, just placing those beacons everywhere, giving you a lot of momentum. I do think that Nani is actually playing a very backline heavy team, and they're actually uh, positioning, positioning themselves very perfectly here on this roof, uh, playing ever so patiently, trying to see but it, it, if it really falls on the dividers to try and push up as much as possible and just play the aggressive um, which I don't know they're going to have to adjust. What do you think, Matt? I think that this has to be one of the most annoying team comps to play against as I look at this, because there's two bubble weapons that they've got. There's a Ken Sedulis, and then if all else fails, there's an E-Leader. So, I mean, this is one of these unique comps that we have just started to see a ton recently. I'm really interested to see how it performs. We saw the Tentabrella there defending so well, but, you know, he had three people on him, so that was a little bit too much. And even though the there has been scored right now, no one was able to throw any leftover clams in, so it can go either way. And Paste, I'm looking at this again, and I, I mentioned the bubbles. What do you think of the state of bubbles right now? Because, of course, there was a time where everybody was running a forge. It was special power-up bubbles, special power-up bubbles. Do you think they still have a place, or do you think that it's really just a, a splat zones and clamblets type? This is a really, really good question. Uh, I do think right now it's fallen to the stage where it's become a bit of a coin flip. Uh, if you do run bubbles, you got to be careful that they don't have a... Um, as ridiculous as it's going to sound, they don't have actually the splashdown to sort of help neutralize the bubbles. Um, however... Uh, if, the, if you do run in bubbles, you got to make sure that you're using it also at the right time. So there's kind of like an element of skill involved where you got to time it properly and make sure that you use the bubbles as advantageously as possible so they don't neutralize it. And of course, it helps your team to make that push that you need. And Rose, there's kind of an interesting dynamic here between the two teams. We have this backline heavy comp, as we mentioned earlier. But the other side, you've got Dapples, you've got a T-Tech, you've got a brush that has now moved up and flanked that poor charger. I mean, what do you think about the dynamic between these two teams being so different? Well, as you can see right here, it's working very well here with the Dapples. And I think the aggression of the more frontliner based weapons really helps in Clan Blitz since you really got to push the, the opponent's side. And as you can see, they're taking the lead right now. Big lead going to open that one up. I want to see how this backline heavy composition can find a way to move up to the top. You see right here, they've managed to sneak a Tentabella around, and they're able to support this Tentabella ever so slightly. But you see again, now they've been pushed back down. There's a jump out in this situation. They need top control if this composition is going to work and pace. They really haven't been able to get it. Yeah, it's, it's just the dividers right now, just kind of adapting as much as possible to the backline heavy comp that the other team is packing. Um, bubbles or not, it doesn't really matter. It seems like right there, the bubbles would have actually come in a little bit more handy and trying to make an enemy team push. However, the dividers are doing such a fantastic job of just constantly being in their face uh, right here. Yuna using those dabbles to just constantly dodge in and out. Oh, here we go. Uh, now actually, here comes a push actually by the opposing team but um, they're going to get subsequently knocked out very quickly, uh, thus preventing any sort of extra push happening. Yeah, they're just not able to get enough points here. And uh, yeah, the dividers are just keeping their momentum. They have multiple power clamps, 29, 30. Oh yes, this is going to be very tough. 
is indeed. They have enough clams to end the game right now should both of those power clams find a way in. That is one, and now the final die is cast. We have a win for the dividers here. A very interesting composition brought out by Team Nani, but not able to put themselves in the positions they need. If you have weapons like that Tentabrella, if you have something like the Explosher, and of course a Charger, it's so important that you put them in positions where they can succeed, and that time, the dividers just didn't let it happen. Uh, interestingly to note, uh, with the team that Nani brought, um, I'm not sure if Triple Bubbles was actually intentional, or they were kind of, um, maybe a little bit squeamish of the fact that the opposing team would be able to bring a splashdown. However, I actually didn't even know one splashdown coming in. And despite that, despite the dividers actually did manage to take that victory. So I think it's going to come down to a question of uh, how the dividers can just constantly play a little bit more of the aggressive game, uh, because obviously that seems to be in their favor. But if Nani is able to actually find a way to sort of counter the aggression, not necessarily with heavy weapons, but maybe with something that's a little bit more defensive. Rose, you got any hot takes on this? Um, well, like you were saying, I don't think generally <laughs> their comp was working very well for them. And as, as you know, we still have multiple Clamlets uh, matches to play. So I really want to see them adapt. And uh, now the Divided work, just worked together so well and they had the pressure on constantly. Uh, I assume they might just stay with this setup since it worked so well and i'm curious to see what nani is gonna do here because the next stage is sturgeon shipyard and for me i don't know i don't really mind this map so much uh what do you guys think of it i actually like sturgeon shipyard clamblets i know i was talking about blackbelly skate park but i think that sturgeon is a perfectly fine map for it because there's lots of different avenues to score <clears throat> i know some people don't like that you can stand up on that snipe area and still score. But I also think that, you know, it's diff the opponent has the option, but you have it too. So I think that as long as you t take care of the middle, you make sure that you have good claim control and that you've always got enough to threaten a push, I think that this is a very fun map to play it on. Paste, any hot takes? I do, actually. Um, I was actually going to say I really hope to see Yuna on the Dapples again because there's an interesting trick that you can do with the Dapples on this map, especially on Clam Blitz, and it only works on Clam Blitz. Uh, if you roll off a certain uh, ledge, uh, you are in perfect position to actually uh, go for the Clam Dunk, and there's very little that they can actually do about it because it's you're, you're not only protected by like the walls that are adjacent to you, but also it just makes it so easy to um, just jump off and try to go for that score as much as possible. And of course, we are seeing Yuna on the Dapples, but on the opposing team, it seems like they're opting for another heavy weapon comp right here with the bubbles, and it's definitely going to work in their favor. Yeah, as you can see, it's definitely working in their favor right now. They scored, but no one, there was no support there from the team. And there was no one able left to score. This has been the first, at least, this happened in a first match as well. There was just no one there. And when you look at their composition, they don't really have an option to push up quickly and safely. It's usually a jump in with a weapon that isn't going to be able to do a ton of following up on its own. So they really need to get a two or three down situation and allow themselves to set up if they want to push this advantage. Either that or they need their Kensa Duelies to have a, a fantastic game, uh, to say the least here. Paste, I mean, do you take anything differently from this or is this kind of what we've been seeing the same as last game? It seems like a lot of we've been seeing in the last game, to be honest. Uh, however, I do want to draw a little bit of an attention to the fact that both teams are running not not any chargers, which is normally something we see on this map, but we have two hydras, and uh, that's actually changing the dynamic up a little bit. It seems that we have a little bit more uh, of a supportive weapon that's not able to, or sorry, not just only able to cover a little bit more of the map, but also offer a little bit of extra protection in the form of the ink card. Yeah, and even though most of the team comp is the same and we kind of see the same thing happening, especially the Hydra, he was just standing on the snipe, picking everyone off and keeping most of their map control. It's sort of working out better here. 
just under three minutes left in the game. Both of these teams about at the same level, shuffling around some clams to try and set up a big push. We've said, a, we've said it. If you're going to score these days, you need to score big. If you are not familiar with how scoring in Clam Blitz works, half of the points that you put in get brought into a penalty, and the opponent gets what we have so affectionately dubbed the Pity Clam which will allow them to have more resources and can oftentimes let them score right back the other way. So it's important that when you score, you score big. Right now, credit to both of these teams, though. They've played that neutral game very well, Pace. Yeah, and um, I do want to point out also that the Dividers is having a little bit of trouble actually trying to go in and get the score that they need and possibly the lead. However, um, the problem I find, especially with this map so far, is that they are playing that aggressive uh, kind of style that they did in the first game. It's not really working out in their advantage, it seems that maybe Nani has actually found a weak point in the opposing team, uh, but the Dividers has to be a little bit more careful with their approaches. They already lost two Power Clams right now, and if they want to have any chance of being able to take the lead, they're going to have to kind of um, double down on a little bit of their effort either in trying to be a little bit more aggressive, or just trying to see if they can thwart the bubble pushes here uh, as it's happening. We have another Power Clam coming in. Yeah, they have a lot of power clams, but it seems that the bubbles were not very well timed as, you know, they were getting picked off and it, ooh, they just got it barely in and then Team Nani is taking the lead. Like you were saying, it's such a big difference from the previous one where they are now able to defend so well and just taking some easy points. That, that was beautiful. Three specials went into that, a safe super jump in, and the Tentabrella came up at the very end to push that one through. That is exactly how they draw it up. And I love the positioning of the Hydra in that situation. The Hydra had two of the easiest kills that they've probably ever earned coming off of that right side behind that Tentabrella. You know, that's something we've seen a lot here. Tentabrella and Hydra is becoming something a little more popular. I know Prophecy, Maybe the most famous team for doing that, but we are seeing some fun compositions with these two weapons based. Yeah, we are seeing a lot of interesting creativity being used uh, with these two weapons in tandem with each other and trying to pair that up with other things that may be a little bit more aggressive or uh, something that's a little bit more defensive. Oh, here we go. Dividers actually did manage to open up the power, sorry, the goal, uh, giving a chance for their team to actually get in some points. However, it doesn't seem like it's going to be doing much. Uh, and of course, they need the lead going to Nani still. Uh, looking at a beautiful spot right now, trying to build up bubbles and maybe still go for a counter push right here. Yeah, I absolutely think it is over. Just a few seconds left. Team Nani was able to defend so well, and now they're able, they threw the clam in at the last second, and it's over. So that gives us a 1 1 situation. You can't say enough about the open map, too. I mean, that one, uh, as we said earlier, was really going to favor a more long-range composition. It was going to allow them more opportunities to get set up. Schellendorf can feel very compressed at times, and of course, you can't move around a ton. But this map, they were able to be a little bit more open. They were able to see where the threats were coming from, and they could address those as they came in. And man, the execution there on that one big push, sometimes that all it takes. Yeah, and uh, I'm interested to see how that's actually going to come into play here for the third map, which is, of course, Port Mackerel on Clam Blitz. Uh, I did joke a, a little bit earlier about trying to see the Quad Stingray, but honestly, the reality might not be too far off. Um, it really depends on how Nani actually, if they choose to stick with that bubble comp that it seems that seems to be working in their favor. However, maybe they might actually throw a wrench <laughs> into uh, Divider's plans and throw, or at least throw them a little bit for a loop. Maybe pack a Stingray or two, see if that actually come in handy towards their pushes. I know that actually comes in super handy if you're actually pairing it up with the bubbles. So who knows, that, that might be interesting to note on Nani's side. However, with Divider's, um, I'm not really too sure. Like, it seems like the aggression seems to go both ways. Uh, I'm interested to see what both of you guys think, really, uh, with regards to if whether or not Dividers can actually uh, take this game using that same aggression, or they might have to shift their playstyle just a little bit. Um, I definitely think they might have to change it up a little, especially since Team Nani was a lot of uh, long range, uh, mostly backliners, like we were saying, and especially in these narrow hallways, they might not have a chance to actually come close at all if they keep this setup. So I'm hoping to see actually some changes. 
getting into it right now we will see if there are some changes again tied 1-1 so we will get to see our fourth game this being the third and we do see a switch over to a stingray from both of our former hydra players so great call on that one sometimes it just is that simple Oh, it's not going to be enough stingrays, though. But you know what? One on each side is going to be very advantageous regardless. Um, the name of the game here, of course, we're trying to see what uh, Nani can actually do with this tent umbrella because I know it covers up a large portion of each of the lanes. That's going to be very interesting. Um, pairing that up even with the stingray, it already has uh, some benefits right here. Yoshi going to be the first one to actually gr uh, grab that power clamp and try to see what they can do for the rest of the game. Yeah, right here, they're scoring so fast. As you could see right now, um, we haven't spoken about it really. Mostly just the Stingrays, but the Tentabrella also works so fantastic on these maps since the, just the entire weapon just covers the entire hallway. You have like a massive shield going on. <laughs> The Tentabrella is strong, and Yoshi has been putting on a clinic here. Let's give some credit to the to the wielder of the weapon in that situation, moving up and getting that big opening. We've talked about how important it is that your first score be a big score. Now we're going to see that Ray do what it does. A baller also went off in there. They had almost 30 clams right now, and I'm not sure they're going to be able to score even one of them. Great defense by Nani. Oh, three players right here got deleted on the side of the dividers. Here comes the Tentabrella and a ball push. Uh, along with the bubbles, there's just so much mayhem happening right here. Uh, dividers trying to see what they can do to pick the rest of the teammates off, but it, in a 2v3 situation, it's not looking very good for them. Rose, uh, this might actually be a very quick game right here. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I actually think that it might be over very soon. Their place with the bubbles and the Tentabrella are just working in their favor so well. We're looking at um Ketzerl here oh and it is scored already they just made their way to the opponent so fast but the rest needs to come in quickly to be able to score as well and a really nice splat actually on yoshi with the dualies but there's just so much points they have to get oh shout outs to our camera operator in that situation there is no right answer in that situation <laughs> everybody was dying rose i think you kind of had the uh the death touch every time you talked about somebody and it went over to them they died that's some incredible power you wield yeah i was like saying earlier that's like the commentator's curse but the moment you're talking about someone's like oh they're playing really well and then they just die <laughs> Oh, going in or another right here. Uh, three members of Nani goes down, but they were so... Oh, and they actually do manage to secure victory. The last clam shuffled in right at the last second right here. 2-1 going in for Team Nani right here. Beautiful play all around. And I think one thing that we didn't talk nearly enough about is they always seemed to have a power clam. They always had a threat that they could use to break things open. And that's, you know, that's one aspect of a good clam blitz team is that you always make the opponent aware of the threat that is the power clam. Because, you know, when what happens when the opponent has the power clam? All of your eyes are instinctively drawn towards there. You start worrying about maybe there's a baller. You may play a little bit more defensively. So great job there to Nani, keeping that threat up, even if it wasn't necessarily immediately threatening. And they got that win. Yeah, definitely. And right now, we are going to be looking at clan blitz on Arowana Wall. Of Wall. I'm sorry. Mall. <laughs> and uh, this is one of another map that I haven't played a lot of clan blitz on. Uh, I'm wondering why people dislike this map so much. Can any of you guys tell me why? I'll toss this one to you, Z or not Zar. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm laughing at what Zar is saying. Zar in chat saying, I literally can't keep up because of all the people who are dying. But Paste, I I'll toss this one to you. Yeah, uh, Arowana Mall, okay, so, <laughs> I, I don't know, I might have a little bit of a biased opinion here. I use a lot of short-range weapons, and uh, the second you put me in Arowana Mall, I'm just kind of like... No, please no. I, I want to get out of here. Uh, <laughs> that what that roughly translates to is uh, Erwana Wall obviously being such a large map, it tends to favor long range weapons. So immediately right off the bat, I can say Nani having their um, it seems like they they've been doing pretty well with this heavy or long range kind of uh, comp that they've been bringing consistently in every single match. Uh, I think they're definitely in favor here. However. Um, that being said, I do think that Dividers has to actually, they're kind of, 
they're really uh, put up against the wall here. They're, you know, when you're in a corner, you really have to sort of rethink your strategy and see if you can actually change things up a bit or maybe stick to your guns. Who knows? We're about to see this in game four. What do you think, Rose? Any thoughts? Uh, well, if one of the teams is keeping their close range, they might actually be able to get through, even though, like you were saying, uh, long range does have kind of the advantage here. But if they keep the pressure on, it might be different. And we actually see some changes coming on right here. Uh, we see the Kensa Charger, uh, which is so fantastic to see. I love the weapon, looks so great. Shadow went actually using the Spluttershot Pro with the bubbles. Uh, yeah, there, it seems like they are cha adapting a little with a little bit of more range, but the dapples just keep coming back. Yeah, it, the Forge coming back here, it's another bubble composition. It's so interesting to see such a premium being put on it, but they're clearly comfortable with uh, not running a baller on this map, so they must be confident that they can push up to that graded area and use their bubbles to run through here. That's the only reason you would really do that, and I don't know, Pace, do you think that's wise? I feel like on a long map like this, sometimes bubble is just what the doctor ordered. Bubbles may definitely be what the doctor ordered. Uh, however, I'm actually very surprised that in all these matches, we have not seen dividers actually run a single splashdown. Um, that would have actually come in very handy in their favor. Maybe they probably just wanted to stick to something that they're a little bit more accustomed to. But I do know that Katsyol actually is very, um, she knows how to actually play a splatter shot quite well. So I'm just very surprised why that did not come out uh, right here. But exactly the same story as being told before. Nani constantly using these bubbles, very carefully picking off each of the members right now. Two members of the dividers go down, making it going to be a little bit of a hard push right there. And I think that's the second time so far that we've actually seen them drop the power clamp. Um, they're going to have to be a little bit more careful with this push. Yeah, and I actually push. don't know. He was just <laughs> a little bit too late. He was uh, making sure he had a power clamp to be able to throw it back and forth, but it left just the last second, and we see, uh, I assume it's Nani scoring here, actually. Trying to make it through back again, but getting stopped there. Just too much people there, too much pressure. Too much pressure, and, you know, earlier I mentioned that oftentimes, you know, it's somewhat easy to classify Clan Blitz maps as one of the three. There's the setup maps, the neutral maps, and the just do whatever you want, but do it quickly maps. This is definitely one of those setup maps. I mean, look at how many bubbles have been thrown already in this game, and there's only been one score. Neither side really has a great way to break through, and the only baller on the map happens to belong to a charger, so... I think both of these teams are content building as many clams as they can and sitting on those for as long as they possibly can. That seems to be the the operation of choice so far, based. Yeah. Um, however, I do like a one point that you just uh, made right here. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing that they have the baller on a charger, uh, because just it means that they'll be able to actually have a safe means of building up that baller in case uh, they want to be able to go in that push. Um, right here, though, uh, we have more bubbles coming in, and it seems like the dividers constantly has to deal with the bubble pressure right here. It seems to be the name of the game, really. Yeah, you knew that one was going to break through eventually here, and now they start to trickle in. Yoshi doing a great job waiting. You know, I was very surprised. I was like, wow, Yoshi's been playing such a mean tent umbrella. Why would you switch off of that? Well, I guess you got a good T-Tech, too. Why not? Great big opening here, and now the onus entirely on Nani to push through. Rose, I'm going to ask you for a prescription here. Dr. Rose, what does Nani need to do to break this open? Well, I am not a doctor, but I'll try to help them. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, they have to put on so much pressure. We see the bubbles coming in right here. They have to, mostly what they just have to do is getting the splats in because um, the dividers are just defending right now and they have so many power clams and so just many clams in general they are able, they just it's just so hard to push through and they have to work together maybe charge their specials coming in as a group and we actually see the wipe here so this actually might be over with just one minute left and yoshi just getting a free spot here to score I do want to make note of a couple of things here. First off, I do want to give credit where credit is due in the fact that Nani is playing this amazing defensive game. However, um, I do think that the dividers have maybe kind of... It seems that since they have their backs against the wall here, it seems like they are making a couple of panic plays. Uh, pushing up 
without a proper escort or being able to uh, throw a couple specials down is not going to work out in their favor. They did lose in that wipe a total of two... Uh, I, I'm i I'm sure it was like two power clans, but I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think there was a third one in there somewhere. Um, and of course, that's going to be a total of 30 clans lost just in like really the span of less than a minute. So um, they have to really think... Uh, try to see if they can actually make a push here. You're not trying to actually go in with those dapple dualies, but unfortunately, once again, being the name of the game, just making those panic plays and not really looking, uh, working to their advantage, really. Time ticking away right here. One's cat gonna wait up here. Has been here almost the entire game using this explosher. This brush is gonna try to go over and make a play, but there isn't a lot of play to be made. There's not gonna be follow up unless Shadow Wind can build up a ball by themselves. I think gonna fall one clam short, and that will be the end of the game there. Great job by Nani. I apologize to those. I called the team wrong out earlier. It was Nani that was winning. We needed a prescription for the dividers. But Nani showing how what might have one time been considered an unconventional comp can still work here. And I would like, I, this is open to both of you. I think that the choice to go E-Leader as well as an Explosher was absolutely brilliant. Because the way that you want to get rid of an Explosher oftentimes falls on a Charger, which is what Katziel went. But a longer range Charger in that E-Leader as the counter. What do you all think? Ooh, you know what? Actually, that is a good point. I never really thought of that. I do think that the uh, the charger there, uh, or sorry, the E leader, able to pick off any uh, sort of just to sort of serve as a def uh, defensive counter to any chargers that would want to pick off that X blusher. Because facing an X blusher, especially a good one, is extremely annoying. Um, so yeah, I, good move actually. I'm not sure if that was like 100% intentional. I do think that maybe you were right on the fact that that was the name of the game or on their end. Um, but it seems like because of that, uh, Dividers wasn't able to actually come up with a decent counter in time, uh, despite them taking one game. Yeah, I definitely think, uh, that was so well played, taking over the E-Leader, uh, over that, especially, but even though, besides that, the Explosion works, I feel like the Explosion works so well on Air Water Ball, especially when you have the height advantage, um, you know, you can just slosh her around. But then again, the E-Leader can just get some distance on and able to shoot him from afar. So it, yeah, it definitely worked in their favor here. It's getting a really nice counter. I'm actually personally sad that we didn't get to see the game five, which would have been Clamblet some back, Black Belly. Uh, that also would have been very in entertaining to watch. Um, not sure if the same comp that Nani would have brought would have been uh, as useful, but I'm sure they would have probably found a way to make it work, especially with all those bubbles running down the halfpipe. 